these things need to be said first. And I guess the first thing I want to want to start with is how many people believe that the believe every word that's printed in the Bible. How many people believe? Amen. That's good to know. And uh, thank you, Congressman Lynch. Good to see you. Uh, I, I think that if we really, truly believed every word in the Bible, that we would live, we would act differently, we we would, you, things would change. Yeah. And I think that what we're finding in America, there's a lot of discouragement. Anybody else feel it? How, how many years of the Obama administration? How many years of, of trying and, and pounding other doors and not doing what we asked them to do? It's, it's discouraging. But what I'm finding is that there's a lot of people who are, are just really looking for the rapture. I just can't wait to. They have more faith to escape the world than they have faith to change the world. And I just got to believe that if there, was, if there was hope for the city of Nineveh, then there's hope for America. That if we rise up, and this is the thing, God is famous for working through remnants. That's what he does. That's, that's who he is. So the question I have for you is, who has the most power in this country? Who has the most power in this republic? Anybody know? I'm going to put you on the spot. I, I had breakfast with a guy in, uh, in Dallas uh, a month or two ago. And he asked that question, and a friend of mine was sitting at the table, and he says, well, it's, it's got to be uh, it's got to be the president. And he says, usually I get, you know, someone saying the Supreme Court. Or, or and he looked at me, and he says, who has the most power in this country? I said, I think I know what you're looking for. We the people. He says, that's right. We the people. We have so much freedom and so much power that we don't even know about. The, 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 I, mean, I'm reading, I read the Bible and I believe it. It says, greater things than these will we do. I haven't seen that yet, but I believe it's possible because Jesus himself said so. So that, so that if we realize greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so when I believe... Is, is that we are now set in a place, if we're looking at the chessboard, where we are right now, we have in the Senate race, in the, in the, in the battle for the heartbeat bill. I was explaining to somebody yesterday, I said, I, I believe we've got something that, 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 that we haven't had in, in, since the last cycle, but right now, um, they have one chink in their armor. The members of the Senate who have been blockading the heartbeat bill for five years, it's passed uh, not once, but twice through the Ohio House of Representatives, Thankfully, through the leadership of uh, a former state representative, hopefully future Congressman Matt Lynch, I've got to tell you, Matt, I, I was looking for Christmas decorations this morning, and in, in the box, for some reason, maybe it was my Christmas present, but right near the, the box where I found them, was a copy of the courageous leaders of the House of Representatives who signed the discharge petition. And your name was right there on it. Right near the top was this man who... who I, I can't even begin to tell you how much I trust in being down there in the middle of it, seeing the establishment and their blockade and their, their, their self-absorption. This guy is the opposite of that. He's the real deal. And, and if you have nothing else, I mean, I, if, 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 no matter what you have going on, we need to take time and help this man win for Congress. I just have to say that. So, um, because he was down there fighting for us every single day. So, all right, so what do they care about? They've all got Google alerts, and they all want to know when their name is. And what about the newspaper? Oh, there's another clip, and here's something else they mentioned to me. They're all self-absorbed. They care about one thing, typically themselves and their jobs. And so right now, because they are so self-absorbed and self-consumed and looking at every press release and every, every news clip, anything we do is magnified. It's sort of like Gideon's army. Where we are right now is Gideon's army. There may not be much of us, but you get a couple letters to the editor. I don't care if you write them yourself. You have someone else sign them, and you, you start getting these things. These people are like, oh my goodness, what in the world? I mean, I wrote an op-ed piece. I printed it in the paper. I had it printed in the, the paper in New Hampshire about John Kasich. All right, I listen to us in Ohio. Let's put it in New Hampshire. You know, if if, if there's an opportunity to gain the, the media attention, let's take it. We were down there when Donald Trump spoke in Columbus, and we had people with banners that Kasich is heartless and blocking the heartbeat bill, and uh, we talked to the Trump campaign. So far, he hasn't brought it up. I think that'd be a really great thing for Donald Trump to mention. And when John Kasich is right now taking out ads against Donald Trump, trying to make him look foolish, well, maybe next, next time he comes to Ohio, he might just mention that the guy is running as a pro-lifer is blocking the most pro-life bill to ever pass the House of Representatives. The best chance to save the most lives is this bill. Is it all we care about? No, but it's a priority issue. Um, many of you know I also created a documentary on marriage. Uh, Pastor Ernie has uh, some of those. 
Uh, and uh, and I, I want to make those available to you. In fact, I just got back from Kentucky. I interviewed Kim Davis. She's the clerk that was sent to jail for her faith. And I'm telling you what, I interviewed 100 people for this film. And Kim Davis, in my opinion, was the most powerful of them. She talked about how they put her into jail and the people who were booking her and the people who were taking her were sobbing. And then she was there in jail. So what did this mild-mannered woman who doesn't like doing interviews, what did she do? What did she say? She said, I sang praises from the top of my lungs and they echoed through the, through the chambers of the jail. Prisoners were, were sending messages through the guards. We're praying for Kim. Let her know we're praying for Kim. This is the kind of, she was just actually nominated for, for Time Magazine Person of the Year. So, so, so there's a lot. There's a lot that we can do, and that is including standing with those who are standing for God. If she stands for God, Matt Lynch stands for God, I stand with them. And so what we're doing right now is looking at, we mentioned the House Discharge Petition. Well, it worked. Back in 1994, we passed the nation's first ban on partial birth abortion with a discharge petition. It was blocked in committee. They wouldn't let it out. So we went and served this, and it's never been done. I remember uh, in that conversation, it was uh, uh, Representative, uh, what is his name now? Pastor says I'm having a senior moment. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want, I'm not saying that. I do not agree to that. Uh, but this representative says, well, we tried the discharge petition in the 1970s, could never get enough signatures. But if you really believe what God's Word says, if you really believe what is reiterated in our motto, it's going to change how you live. So the, the motto is, you all know it, with God all things are possible. So that's been embedded in my mind. And so when they said it's impossible, I just said, watch it. You watch and see what God does. And we have circulated the discharge petition. I'm told it's the only one that's ever worked. It was the first one that I'm told it's the only one that's ever worked, but it worked. And what I told Representative, I told Senator Peggy Lehner, Penny Peggy Lehner was for the discharge petition in 1994, and I told her office, left a big, long voicemail, and said, hey, you were for a discharge petition back in 1994 for a bill that, uh, why not for a bill that's far more protective than that one ever was? The heartbeat bill will save 20,000 babies a year. Why would you not favor a discharge? Well, it's an unusual move. It's, a, it's very, it's very uh, highly unlikely. You know what? What we're telling them to do is saying, look, all right, you're all saying we're hiding and saying they just won't pass it. I'm really for you, but they just won't do it. Uh -huh. so, so I'm on the phone. I'm talking to, uh, to uh, uh, Senator Hottinger and, and Senator Eaker and Senator Peter Sandin, and I said, all right, so what you're telling me is you're for it, but they just won't move. I said, well, there's got to be a way because there's a whole lot of people who are saying they're for it, but yet the bill's not moving. There's got to be a litmus test to find out who's really with us and who's not. And so, we suggested the discharge petition. And I sent certified letters to every Republican, and I asked them to sign their name on the piece of paper. And, and, and basically, if you don't, if the chance to save 20,000 lives a year is not worth your name on a piece of paper, then you're not as pro-life as you've been telling us. Amen. And so, we have the litmus test, and guess what? So far, nobody has signed it. We went on the radio, and I had a, I, I did a Facebook message. It was a little snarky, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say how I did it. But Senator, Ge Senator Chris Jordan posts a, a picture of a baby on, the, on Facebook. And I didn't even know, but I'm his friend on Facebook. And so there's a picture of his mother with his little baby. And I said, I said that, everybody's saying how cute it is. I said, I said, not, I said uh, adorable. I said, but are you going to sign the discharge petition to protect babies, or is this just a nice picture? That's what I wrote. Next thing, five seconds later, a, a response comes in that says, I will sign it. All right? So I announce it to the world. He will sign it. But guess what? I think the, the, the Columbus cartel has gotten to him because so far he has not signed it. So what did I do in the last email? I took a little screenshot of his, his written response on Facebook. Accountability. How about some accountability? He says he'll sign it. Where's your signature? Well, I, taught, I personally went down there, walked, up, walked the halls again of, of, of every Senate office, and I said, uh, so tell me, is he going to sign it? Because he told me he was going to sign it. Well, he didn't say that he would actually um, pull the discharge petition. He didn't say he'd actually go to the clerk's office to get a discharge petition. I said, well, that's the only way you can sign it, isn't it? Well, yeah, but you know what? Yeah, you, you know, so blah, blah. You heard the story. This is how it is. All these guys are saying that they, you know, they, they're with us. In fact, Joe Eaker's saying, I'm wearing the pro-life feet. Guess what? Wearing the pro-life feet is not enough. Or if you cast a vote four years ago, that's not enough. Because there's 20,000 babies this year who are dead because they did not move. And so what I've been doing 
is recruiting candidates. And I've been following people to run for office. And uh, I'm going to tell you, one of the people that I called uh, was Mary Pat Izar. And I'm glad you're here. Am I saying your name right? You are. I'm grateful that you are here. I know uh, Skip Claypool has now put his name in, too. We talked to him. But I, last time I talked to him, he wasn't thinking he was going to run. So now, now I'm not sure what we're going to do, but we're glad you're here. And I, I want to say that, <coughs> that, uh, that uh, Senator Eklund has been among the, the, the blockade. They'll, they'll tell you to your face how pro-life they are, but really, then why don't you sign your name? Is that too much for you to do? Really? Because then voting for you is too much of an effort for me. Yeah. And so what we're telling them is, look, if you're not willing to, to sign, we're not willing to vote for you. In fact, we're going to actively vote against you. Here's where, here's where this all comes into play. So few people vote in a primary that if we gather, they're scared, and they, they should be, and, and, and because so few people vote, if we get our groups and our churches, two things, two things. Number one, vote biblically. That's the only thing. Vote biblically. This guy telling me in, uh, in, in Dallas, he says, two things they need to do. Vote biblically, vote in the primaries. We will change the world if we vote in the primaries the right way. And so we're doing, uh, we're doing uh, a recruitment, and so I had literally ten people Matt, 10 people turned me down. I'm not a very good recruiter, recruiter apparently, to run against Larry Alboff in Medina in Ashland, Richland County, part of Holmes County. And, uh, and I, I, I know that the clock is ticking. If you want to run for office, you've got to turn in those petitions on uh, December 16th. By the way, Mary Pat, did you bring some today to sign? If, you, if you are in this district, you cannot leave here today without signing her petition. Just that's if, you, if you're pro-life, you want to vote biblically, get this woman on the ballot because she's willing to do what it takes. Uh, Eklund and District 18. Tell the area. Do you know the area? Can you spell it out? Geauga, Portage County, some of Geauga County, Portage County, and Lake County. But keep in mind, this is important, Mary Pat, and I'm not sure you, you, you've got the, I, the, the, you want to make sure you know this, is that you can only put people, if they're in Portage County, they, they can only be on a Portage County sheet. If they're in Geauga County, a Geauga County. You can't mix the counties yeah, on those sheets. They didn't tell me that when I was pulling the petition. Huh, I'm telling you now. Okay. So that they could all say, oh, well, look, this is disqualified. We'll have to throw this up. That's what they do. Okay. So one county per sign-up sheet. Okay. How do I know this? Because after I failed 10 people telling me no, yesterday I went down to the Medina County Board of Elections and I filed to run for the state senate against Larry Alba. So I'm going to run. And I don't want to do it. But I've been telling everybody else to run. And you know what? I'm willing to do what I'm telling people to do. I told one guy. I talked to this guy. He's a trustee uh, to, to run against uh, Dave Burke. And I said, I'm not saying it's a sin if you don't run. But it might be. <laughs> um, we, we, we have freedom. I told God when I saw Obama being sworn in, my father, I was so upset. My father said, just turn it off. Don't watch it. It was very good advice, by the way. And I said, I said, God, if you give us more freedom, I promise you I'm going to use it for everything is worth. We have, right now, the ability to do anything God puts on our heart to do. And I'm sorry I'm emotional because this is, this is our country. And we're the ones who hold the keys to the power. They do not. They're so pompous, so arrogant, so self-absorbed and self-consumed, they think the seats are theirs. So much so that if you dare run against the establishment, how dare you? You're immediately ostracized. Do you know that, that, that our heroes in the House of Representatives, you know them well, Nino Vitale and Tom Brinkman uh, and some others, were, were yanked from their endorsement. The Republican Party wouldn't endorse a Republican incumbent because they just don't play by the rules. In other words, they want to change things. They don't want the, the regulation bill uh, of, the, of the year, of the session. They don't want it. They, don't, they, want to, they want to do some good with the power they have. And the system is such that it's whether it's Chris Jordan that they try to beat down and tell him, no, don't sign that discharge petition. We'll, we'll take your committee chairman away. We'll take your, your whatever you have away. We won't give you any money when it comes time for re-election. Now they're not even giving people the endorsement. What in the world? These are people that have lost their way. It's like John Kasich. I wrote the article, I said I was a really supporter of John Kasich, really early, back in the 90s. Right. I was, was a campaigner for him, I, I debated his opponent for him, I, I was a spokesperson at the time, and the man has lost his way. And so what you have to do is, 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 is 
is realize that there is a political spirit. This is all a spiritual battle that we're fighting. And there's a political spirit that's going on that is keeping people from doing what is right. It's this self-absorbed, I can't do anything controversial because it could hurt me in the election. The thing they care about is the thing we're going to go after right now, is that primary election. What happens? What happens if we actually take a scalp? If one of these incumbents actually loses? Let's rattle the system. Maybe we could shake it up a bit. I think that's what needs to happen. I know last time around, here's what happened. I'm editing the movie. This is, this, I'll just give you a, what, a scene in the life of Janet Porter. I'm sitting in the movie. I've got an editor next to me. And, and I'm working on this film that you can get from Pastor Ernie. And, and, uh, and I'm talking to Lori, Lori Byers, who is one of our, uh, one of our generals in this army. And uh, I said, Lori, we've got to run people against these people. She goes, Janet, the deadline's in a week. And I said, well, we've got to try. I mean, with God, all things are possible. If you believe it, it's going to change how you do it. You're going to try to do the impossible because that's what God says he will equip us to do. Sure, you can live a mediocre, lukewarm life and just get along and go to meetings. I don't think that applies to any of you here. They don't, you don't give up a Saturday to, to, to come and listen to some people talk because you care. But there's a lot of people going through life and I'll have to go along, get along. I've got to take care of my family. got to do the business thing. Gotta, you know. No, no. We have a very short life. But we can do anything we want in with it. God has given us the freedom to do whatever we want with this life of ours. And so I believe that what we've got to realize is, and I've lost my train of thought of where I was going with this whole deal, but I want to say I haven't had much sleep. Oh, here, the day of life of Janet Porter. We're doing this thing. Lori Byers called me, and she says, I said, we've got to get candidates. She says to me, that's impossible. And I, 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 I used to be. And they wrote an article one time, the plain dealer, about this. But, but that I used to be, when you say the word impossible, that I knew it was going to be done. I, I, and, and it used to be that I had that kind of favor where God would just, what I would take on and charge them out with. It was like the discharge petition in 1994. They said it was impossible, and we did it in a day. It's so, all right. So, so Lori says that's impossible. And, and, and this editor is 19 years old. He's sitting next to me. I said, did you hear that? He said, I just want you to burn that in your mind. Just take a note of that. Because the following week, we had candidates filed in nearly every single race, and we cost them over a million dollars last session. All right, so that's, that's a start. That's a start. And, and by the way, we picketed, my, we picketed Shannon Jones at her house, uh, who's the committee chairman who's holding up the bill. We picketed P, uh, Keith Faber at his home now twice. Uh, Casey's been getting banners where he goes. Uh, we need to, to hold them accountable. And so... What I want to say is, is that God is greater. He is, he is, he is bigger than we, than, we, than, we, than we realize. We have more power than we know. The way that the enemy wins is when we give up. And when we get discouraged, shake it off. I get people to call me and say, a lady called me today, yesterday. She says to me, uh, she's working to fight, and I'm going to tell you the whole story. I'm going to give you an insight of, of, of how God works. God is real, and he's still the same today as when he was speaking to people in dreams. This girl has a dream. This is her dream. She, she, I, I meet her because she's coming with a friend of mine to stay at my home a couple of weeks ago. And she has a dream, and in her dream, she feels great danger for her children. And so in the dream, she puts them up against the wall, and she's standing in front of them to protect them. And in the dream, she sees a stack of swords. And, and there's like little daggers, like antiques, and there's some relics, and there's some things. And, and she, she says, I better go, I need to get one to protect my children from this, this evil. And so she goes and she sees this great big William Wallace sword. And it's got a silver plate on it. And it's sitting there, and she goes to pick it up, and she says to herself in the dream, that's too big. You could never, you could never lift that. And she reaches for the little antique sort of relic dagger, and she comes back, and she's sort of she she goes, ah. she wakes up realizing she grabbed the wrong sword. So a friend of mine, she used to listen to my radio show. She read my Criminalization of Christianity book. We've been friends ever since. And she comes over uh, with this girl. The girl sold a dog to her. That's how she knows her. She tells her, says, "Well, we're, my friend Janet's working on a heartbeat bill in Ohio," and she said something came alive in her. She comes to my house. And I spent the weekend with them, and we were brainstorming and praying. And, and she sits down in my living room, and across the top of my mantle, above the fireplace, is a William Wallace sword that I was given as, a, as an award. One of the coolest awards I ever got, that. This is me thing. And it said Defender of Life on it, on the silver plate, on the sword. 
And she looked at this, complete with a silver blade. She couldn't read it in the dream. She says, that's the sword I saw in my dream. And so I said, you've just been given a divine do-over. I took the sword off the wall, put it on the floor, and said, pick it up. It's not too big. And it's not too heavy. And you're not too frail and you're not too weak. Because God said, let the weak say I'm strong. And if you look at the, I think it's the English Standard Version, it says, let the weak say I am a warrior. That's the title of my next book. Let the weak say I am a warrior. That's what God said. We are. And so she says, well, there's this kooky friend of my mom's. And I don't even, she goes, I'm so not into politics. Can I tell you? She goes, I, I read a book and she does a blog. And she reads a Christian book, and she does like a book review, right? And the book review was on Winston Churchill, and this woman is so far removed from politics, she said she finished reading the book, and she says, what do you know? He isn't an American president. Okay, that's pretty bad. And I, I blame that on the government schools. But are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's, I just want to tell you who we're dealing with here. As a mom, we thought Winston Churchill was a president. Wow. And she says a, a friend of hers... Uh, invited her to, she said, would you have a, a meet and greet for the state senator? She agreed to, didn't know why, she doesn't know anything about politics. That state senator, a, a, a few days later after meeting at our house where she sees the sword, is now going to be the, the prime sponsor of the Indiana heartbeat bill. And so this is what God does. This is who he is. And, and, and I've, I've said that, I just told Pastor when we were talking, I don't know how much more time I have, but I, I said because he's telling his stories, I said, yours isn't just a book of your life. This is just not a movie. You've got several movies that can be made out of the experiences of your life. But the question I have is if they make a movie about your life, would anybody want to watch it? <laughs> have you ever taken on the impossible? Sure, you can do the, you can do the, the doable. That's where Ohio Right to Life is. Right? Regulate abortion. Yeah, we want to regulate abortion. Yep. Hooray for that. You know what? That's fine. And I'm not dissing it because I did it a lot of years of my life, but there comes a time where we actually need to say, we're here to do what we said we were going to do, and that is end abortion. And the time to do it is now. And if there was ever a time, this is for you, Mary Pat, this is for you, Matt, if there was ever a time to run against the Republican establishment, ask Donald Trump. That time is now. Yeah, amen. And so I believe what we need to do is if we can get our fellow Christians, our family members, our neighbors, our Bible studies, our whoever you know, and you say two things, you vote biblically, you vote in the primaries, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a sheet out. In fact, maybe we can pass it around, Pastor. I want to get an email. If you want to get a voter guide from me about where people are, then, then I want to get your email before I go if I can because we need your help. To, to equip people to do the thing that is the most powerful weapon we have in the political process, and that is voting in the primary where so few people vote, we can then use it to our advantage. I remember when I ran for state central committee, and I, I literally been having this conversation with God, I'm like, I didn't want to run, I gave that up. I'll tell you my personal story is I, I worked for um, Dr. D. James Kennedy in, in Florida, and I had run for the central committee, and I remember someone on the committee says, well, you know, Jan, you're running against the secretary of the party for Central Committee. You're just not going to win. The most money wins. That's what he said. And so we got a group of people out, and we, we put together a door-to-door -door team, and we did all of these things, and we ended up winning. In fact, I remember the conversation I had with John Kasich. Maybe some of you have heard me say this. John Kasich called me on election night. He says, how's it, how's it looking, kiddo? This is back when he was pro-life, and he was our friend, right? And he says, uh, I said, right now the preliminary results are in. It looks like 60-40. And he says to me, Jan, you know, there's just no way you could have come against what they did. They, they, they did more against your central committee race than they did against me in Congress. I got four mailers, three push polls about you. There's no way you could have pulled it off. I said, John, 60 40 us. He said, You gotta be kidding. Me. You gotta be kidding. Me. And we ended up taking on the Secretary of the Party because so few people vote in the primary, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So that we have more power if we just harness it. And tell our people, this is what we need to do to get it back. If you're upset about it, quit complaining about it, and start doing something. And that's, that's really the key. Um, so, so, hey. Can you take some questions? Let's do that. I have more to say, but let's take some questions. Yes, ma'am. Yes, March 15th. Three months away, and March 15th. Lynch is running against David Joyce, and unless we get Matt Lynch elected from this primary, he won't be on the ballot in November. It's very important, March 15th. Do you, 
you have anybody you need to sign up on your uh, petitions, Matt? Our petitions are all done. They're all done? We're finally next week. So Great. We'll go down the petitions. Button. Okay. But, but you're absolutely right, Mary. The, 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 the primary is the, where the race is to be won. Otherwise, in November, you're left with a bad choice and a really bad choice. Yeah. So we have to win these primary elections. And I, I just believe, I, I believe our motto. I believe the word. And, 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 and persistence wins. This is the key. And, and yes, is it discouraging sometimes? This girl called me up and she's saying, the right to life of Indiana is this supporting. Wow, does that sound familiar, Denver? Pastor, that sounds familiar? Yeah, and some of the people are, are being talked off the bill. We lived that nightmare. That's part of how it is. And what I believe, I think that anybody that's willing to take on and challenge the impossible, anybody willing to do the impossible, engages in the same thing. Because if you read the Word of God like I do, God is famous for using the remnants. That's what He's famous for. That's His specialty. That, that, you know what? She says, well, they, so and so never signed our petition for the heartbeat bill. I said, shake it off. That's a trap. Don't get angry at all the people that you counted on that couldn't be counted. Shake it off. We don't need to worry about the no's. Just go after the yeses. Find another yes. Don't complain about the no's. Find another yes. And so that's, that's, really, that's really what I want to say to you today. I'll take maybe another question or two. And, and um, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, in your story, it was just kind of uh, reminding me in my mind that you must know a, a famous uh, state senator from Illinois in the 90s who was a big advocate of the partial birth abortion ban. Any point? And, uh, no, he was he was an advocate of the partial birth abortion ban. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, um, against it. He fought hard against the oh, abortion ban. Um, and Penny Poland was, yes, his uh, adversary. Who then became the uh, he that then became the uh, federal senator of Illinois and um, did even more damage now as the president of the United States. Oh my! With regard to that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember now. And he also voted uh, for the the border, against the protection of babies who were born alive. Right. Uh, correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, so, any other questions? I just want to encourage you today um, that it's all true. We're banking everything we have on this book, and it's true. And yes, we win in the end. But what we can do right now is is not just wait for for the for the great you know for the, the return, and, and, and that's going to be glorious. It's going to happen whenever it's going to happen. But until then, occupy until it comes. Amen. Take dominion. That's that's really what I believe we're called to do. And uh, I believe that God is going to show up because that's that's who He is. Um, and that's His character. That's that's. Um, that's why we place our trust in him, because he's trustworthy. He is the one he claims to be. He is the one he has always claimed to be. Let me share a verse with you just before I, I close. It, I found this the other day, and it, it really encouraged me. When I was deciding whether or not to marry my husband, I had I, I felt, well, there's, a, there's a long story with it, but I, I, I heard the words, maybe he's your husband. A thought came to me, and I thought, just in case that's God, I want to look at him and see who that is. And I had to get three verses to confirm it. And this one struck me so severely. It's like those three confirmation verses. Listen, listen to this. This is Isaiah 46, 13. What if, what if this is for us right now? For I am ready to set things right, not in the distant future, but right now. What if God has heard our prayers all of these decades? What if God is saying, I'm ready to set things right not in the distant future, but right now. I want to be on the front lines, on the front row, to see what God is going to do to shift this country and to give us that great awakening that I believe begins with the, with the, uh, the, the end of abortion. And uh, so thank you very much. I'm very grateful for your time. Next we're going to hear from this young fellow. Right here. And, uh, and I apologize earlier. I'm going to hear a little bit. I have to run. God bless you.